Hari Hari Namahari Makula Kata Mataha Eta Thana, please again if you could stand for the base back of Toki. Amuri Akia Faka Ranga Puke. Onwards and upwards as ever. Thank you, staff, councillors, members of the public, press, welcome everyone. I have apologies from councillors Nakatamani and Baron. Can I please have someone move that? Councillor. Uh, uh, Mackie, seconded by Councillor Rowella. All those in favour? Uh, those against? Um, I also, anyone got any declarations of interest? If not, that's great. Uh, late items. Now, I'd like to welcome in Ian Harvey and Mel Halliday here, but not just yet. But what I want to do is their item number two, I want to move them to item number one. Just for efficiency for them if they're here. So I'll move that. Can someone please second that? Second, Councillor Herbert. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? Thank you. Public forum. Anyone in public? Oh, was a late item. Was your word a late item? A public excluded late item needs to be moved. Someone, move. Our Councillor Finch, moved. Councillor Kennedy is seconded. All those in favour of accepting the late item? Thank you. Those against? Thank you. Right. Public forum. Are you in public forum? It's me, sir. Thank you. The floor is yours for five minutes. Look forward to your presentation. Well, yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, I thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. Last time I spoke, there seemed to be some, some confusion as to my motives or go for goals. I'll, um, I hope today to clear that up. I'll start by passing on the thanks to the Greater Milton area for the meeting conducted by Councillor Graham um, and fully participated in it by the Bruce Ward councillors and others. We witnessed old school democracy where an agenda, by, agenda item was put in at the last minute, was identified as wrong, and the voice of the Milton people was fought for and eventually winning the day. It was, however, a darker moment, <coughs> and that, of course, was when Councillor Ludeman wrongfully took exception to what I was saying. Excuse me, point of order, there will be no direct. Um Attack or influence on a council member, thank you. Okay. Appreciate councillors if you just take note of that and be wary of yourself. Thank you. So, yeah, no yeah. reference or attack directly on any council member. A clear breach of the council standing orders was, was included, but not limited to section 15 public forums. Questions from elected representatives are confined to more information and clarifications, not opinion. Also, Section 20, behaviour must be consistent with the Code of Conduct. And Section 3, General Matters, members must obey standing orders. Early in the meeting, Councillor McCrosty made... Excuse me, point of order, yeah. you're, it's already been explained. Early in the meeting, a councillor made an off the cuff remark to a member of the other council staff, which was immediately and correctly pulled up on as a point of order, with the CEO alerting to a breach of the standing orders. That's fine. Get a tirade of ill opinion directed at me. Excuse me, point of order. Uh, it's your opinion that's a tirade that I take that as a derogatory statement for any action of a council. Please be more um, discretionary in your use of phrases. This was questioned by the chair at the time, but was not called as a point of order by anyone, including the mayor, who generally speaks for the whole council. Now, this is my point. We, as a group, have worked very hard to empower people to be part of the democratic process in a respectful way to our elected representatives and invoke the democratic right to speak. 
Within our group, we have the privilege of a person who not only writes but critiques speeches for parliamentary purposes. His advice on listening to the live stream was that I'd done nothing wrong, and the person involved obviously mis misinterpreted what I was trying to say. Although he did say that if it was going to Parliament, possibly my points could be more subtle. But he also attempted that's not who I am, and the possibility of changing that is very slim. We do not get paid for any of this, and I cannot afford to work in grey areas. I need to know that when I finish speaking, there is no doubt in people's mind what I mean. <clears throat> it's also noted that what happened could be seen as intimidation or bullying as an effort to stop free speech, which ironically is exactly what's been happening. I can't use that word. This goes to my point on a previous speech where I suggested perhaps staff need a training and meeting adequate, which I see has been uh, done today because I've just been handed a big bit of paper on how to do it, so that's good. I respectfully ask that my complaint of the council's breach of code of conduct is limited, and a remedy of refresher course in the council procedure is given to the councillor and the mayor, which you probably already have done seeing that. Now, just to be clear, our group is not focused on picking on the council's faults. We realise that elected council has a very difficult, if not impossible, job ahead. The only thing we have to work with is proper process, and that's the only thing that we have got. And if we have to abide by the rules, obviously you lot have to too. And as I've stated, we now have many, many, many people analysing every movement, every movement, every word, and obviously every mistake coming out of this room. You're under the spotlight like never before. And with that in mind, we would like you to be more consistent with your messaging. And I can give you a couple of quick examples. <clears throat> this newspaper article, where the mayor puts in there, speaking to the whole council, says that he's not going to um, go to our meeting because it would be a breach and it would be redundant, as the councillors cannot speak to the long term plan or the rates rise. I was very confused the other day when setting the meeting that we're having tonight that the CEO offered volunteer <coughs> to answer some questions on the submission process after already lecturing, <coughs> sending us an email saying that he's unable to accept their invitation to the meeting because the council hasn't yet adopted a consultation document and supporting information for consultation, which is fine. But what I'm saying here today is it's completely baffling because you still haven't done that. The consultation document hasn't been accepted or approved. So that's just. So I have to have a point of order there again because we're discussing matters, as you know, that are under consultation. And yeah. Right. So basically, what I'm saying is what's changed? Nothing's changed from the email. <clears throat> and the CEO putting himself in a position in a public meeting to have to answer questions which he cannot will cause frustration. And I guarantee if the CEO of the Cleaver District Council came to a public meeting, the questions from the public would not be confined to just the submission process. Our meetings are run with accurate information to inform people, empower people, and leave them with a golden mind. They are not designed to confuse and frustrate, but rather give people information with solutions moving forward. We as a group will need to engage with the council, but that needs to be on our terms because they're our meetings. The same, obviously, as when you guys run a meeting, you have rules and expectations. Obviously, that I'm being made very well aware of today. And later tend to changes cause more confusion and the lack of proper information and understanding, as witnessed with recently with the Milton Cannons. <coughs> it would be unproductive to invite people that cannot speak and answer questions. And we certainly don't want to be part of another media dog and pony show. A more appropriate solution would be to come to a meeting after the consultation documents are adopted and the CEO and Mayor are able to talk. I thank you for your time, but I'd like to re reiterate that we are not some ragtag bunch of protesters, but an organised group of intelligent and concerned citizens that are here for the long run. And we have a growing forum of people within the system offering advice and information. Right, just before we have questions, I think it only fair because I certainly don't have a clue what uh, the references to the CEO is about, and I very much doubt if you do, councillors. So I think it's only fair that we give our CEO the opportunity to clarify. If he wishes to. Oh, just briefly, Your Worship. Um, I'll just make the point that um, I received an invitation um, to the meeting that, that was a 
that was an invitation through my PA to attend, um, and um, that was replied to um, to the affirmative. And the reasoning for that was um, I still fully endorse the issue associated with the fact we haven't gone out with a long-term plan consultation document. And um, I, I didn't intend to discuss the LTP because we haven't gone out with it. Um, however, um, I was um, aware of the live streaming of the previous meeting in, um, in uh, Belcletha, um, and I was aware of a number of statements that were made that um, uh, were just wrong, and I was more... Um, my intention was, if I had the opportunity, to correct those um, uh, incorrect statements. And that was my intention of accepting the invitation. I mean, I advised his worship um, uh, uh, of that, um, but I was then rung up, or a voicemail was left um, yesterday morning, disinviting me from the meeting. And so I advised the, the, his worship, the Mayor, of the same thing as well. Thank you for that. So question, uh, questions... To Mr. Barrett, please, Council. No. Thank you. You were invited. Uh, excuse me. Thank you. Now, as you know, councillors, we changed the order of the meeting so that our friends from Credible Values could uh, come and, and not be delayed. Oh, sorry. Is there any other public forum? No other public forum. My apologies for not making that offer quicker. Um, yeah, so uh, item number two. Welcome, Ian and Matt. Pleasure to have you here, actually, and really looking forward to once again getting a, a further insight into the revaluations, the implications. The floor is yours. Does this, does this, will this have our presentation on it? Just get it yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, my name is Mel Halliday. I am the South Island Revaluation Manager, um, and I was lead valuer on the Coastal District Revaluation Project. This is Ian Harvey, who's a long-time registered rural valuer uh, who led the rural side of the project. Um, I know you guys had uh, Tim Gibson speaking in December, so we're going to sort of light touch over the process and sort of get to the nitty gritty as we were sort of looking at preliminary values. I'm sorry, <laughs> preliminary values uh, in December. These are the final uh, audited and implemented values. So. <coughs> Uh, we had a team of five registered valuers and two graduate valuers working on this project. Uh, we're very lucky in Otago Southland to have a good, um, a good amount of experience uh, in the region. Um, so we're based from offices um, around Otago and Southland, Alexandra, Dunedin and Invercargill. Um, as I say, I know Tim sort of touched on the, the process last time he was here. Um, you would have been at about that black box of the setting the initial market adjustments. So after we've done our initial sort of what's happening in the market and from here we do a review in more detail of all the properties. Uh, we also um, have an internal quality assurance process now. Um, that's been running for three years, but more formally started this year, where we now have a um, dedicated resource of three experienced registered valuers um, who um, or effectively audit the, the revaluation before we send it to the Office of the Valuer General, who formally audits the, the, um, the values for certification. I'm sure Tim also talked uh, a little bit about the um, implementation of the Valuer General's Office new traffic light framework on, on our audits. Um, this was brought in, I believe, three years ago, um, and I Clutha received a green light last time, and we were very delighted to receive a green light at audit on this revaluation as well. And that's also a credit to council staff. Um, the Valuer General's Office look at these revaluations as a collaboration. 
council hold a lot of data um, and a lot of information that's relevant to a revaluation. So um, particularly with the likes of your planning team that we were in a lot of contact with over the revaluation um, and anything that can be affecting values in the region. Obviously, we start that revaluation with understanding what's happening at a, at a macro level. Uh, 2023 interest rates was probably the, the big one alongside the increase to building costs. Uh, the increase to building costs has affected um, the demand for vacant land across pretty much every sector, across pretty much the whole country. Um, so a real lack of vacant sales uh, because feasibility uh, being so challenging and, and that build cost being so uncertain through 2023. We then take a look at what's happening sort of locally. And I think probably the, the key message here for Clutho is, is probably a bit more of a slow and steady. It's a little bit less sort of boom bust and um, it's sort of just ticking along. Um, this is some of the, the comments and the feedback that we received from uh, local agents and our investigations about what's driving some of the supply and demand in the district. And we also look at metrics, sort of building consent numbers and resource consent numbers to try and understand that, um, understand the picture of what's happening in the market. And no surprises, building consent issued was down in 2023. Um, and interestingly, resource consents were, were up slightly. We do some sort of broad, high-level look at, at property values and rents. That can be quite tricky in a district like yours, where there's um, quite a variance in the in the markets. And this graph here uh, shows our average property value change. Um, the black line symbolises when the values were last done in 2020, and we can see that kind of sort of gentle rising through to sort of mid 22 and then sort of a gentle petering down. And just, um, but what we observed both anecdotally and from the data was um, the property market sort of really entering that recovery phase, phase from July 2023. So just starting to see um, a bit of upturn in the market. But and that was also evident in the sales volumes. Um, 2022 was definitely a very quiet year and um, that, uh, Activity has picked up a little bit, but again, we would describe it as sort of fairly subdued. It's sort of not skyrocketing off here, um, but just yeah, nice and gentle. So these are the final um, overview of the values as implemented. Um, you'll see there a little bit of variance in the rural sectors, which Ian will touch on on later. Um, the urban side, sort of reasonably consistent there. Um, pastoral um, properties is most definitely your biggest contributor to value. Um, they've gone up 12%. Uh, residential makes up your biggest number of properties. And um, we've seen probably those biggest lifts in lifestyle, land values, um, and forestry, which again, Ian will touch on, is... Um, is a bit of a realignment from, from low 2020 values for the extra high percentage there. Um, this graph is basically just showing the same information in that graph form. Again, it just sort of shows more obviously those um, bigger land value changes to lifestyle and forestry, and forestry having the biggest uh, capital value change from 2020 levels. Residential market, um, again, as I've touched on, 2020, fairly, fairly quiet, um, and that just um, 2021 was, was still value growth from the 2020 through to that mid-22, um, and then sort of, a, yeah, that sort of recovery period that we've entered sort of the middle of last year in property values. These are all actually fairly consistent. Um, the obvious two outliers there being Tapa Nui and Anclut the West with some big looking percentages there. Um, but as we move to the next slide, we'll sort of see the, the data driving that. 
um, which if we look here, the average land value in Tapanui is now 78,000. So big, big percentage change. Um, but if we look at the, the context of those average land values, it's probably looking a lot more logical um, in the context of the other regions. Um, so we actually probably saw slightly less growth um, in, in the higher valued sort of Balclutha area um, than some of those smaller settlements that are coming off a lower base. Um, and the exception to that being Clutha North, where Waihola, Tyree Meath, um, they are sort of one of the demand drivers of, the, of where there has been extra growth outside of um, what's happening in the general district. Um, commercial industrial, again, this is probably a fairly subdued one. We do a rental survey to all commercial and industrial property owners, um, and that indicated a, a very conservative rent increase over the three years, and we were still looking at a slight yield reduction from the 2020 levels. But overall, again, it's, it's sort of a fairly low base and probably a little bit more of the, the bottom part of the market coming up. Um, than, than sort of the top end racing off. And, and again, sort of with um, stronger industrial market, the industrial market's very appealing from an owner-occupier. Um, again, the, the, vacant, um, the vacant land and feasibility is still a real challenge for commercial and industrial. Um, but activity had picked up in 2023 as well. So I think I'm going to be handing over to Ian here to talk to you a bit about rural and lifestyle in the district. Okay, just like to remind the council that the review period is from, I think it's August 2020 to September 2023. So there was good growth period in that, those initial years, but now it's, it's certainly flattened out and it's really, really tough going out here just now for pasture, especially with the droughts, low commodity, high inflation and interest rates. So. But in that period, there was good growth. I remember three years ago standing here addressing the council about the forestry push into the Dillian district. Well, that, that's, that's continued in that, uh, that period. That's been a big driver of the increase in the, in the rural side, especially the pastoral. You'll see pastoral's gone up 12.1. Well, that, that's an average, though. Some, some pastoral probably wouldn't have changed at all. It would be the higher high value of the North Clifton to Health area. But it's the Lawrence. Or the Chuapika area, Lawrence and Beaumont, Stigal Hill, Fable Hill, that had a big increase driven by the forestry. West Otago, Council of Herbert, not, not such a big increase, but certainly forestry is, is influencing some of those areas too. Dairy again, uh, approximately 10%, but the higher value than Clutha Parrot High wouldn't have changed much. It's more those secondary areas that have had the increase. Horticulture's three properties I think. I think they've probably been former tulip places around West Otago or horticulture. Yeah, and forestry has had the big increase. No question of that. And that'll be partial property being converted to. And reminder that, that we don't don't value the tree crop, that, that's that's quite a quite a separate issue. But it's certainly been big interest from corporates, private investors within the Clutha district, but they recognise the the good growth pattern easily, good processing capability and proximity to port. So and that, that's that's real positive for the district. It's certainly flat at the moment though, no question about that. Uh, and just lifestyle, it's really mirrored the um, residential increase, uh, big increases in the my whole uh district, also southern areas coming off the road base. And a lot of agents report that with COVID, people like to work from home now. So that's, that's added to the appeal of the lifestyle. But overall, we've been good value growth in most, most category types. But it just reiterates it's certainly tough going out there now. Um, and then just going into sort of our key dates, which we are mostly through all of these now. So just a reiteration that the values were the 1st of September last year. Um, we've been through all of our audit and implementation and owners' notices sent out a couple 
couple of weeks ago. Um, we're now in the injection period um, till the 18th of April, which um, I think last time we set around 80 injections. It was a really low number for the last revaluation. Um, possibly expecting um, a bit more this time around, just with the um, heat of um, cost of living and, and sort of concerns around that. But, um, but so far, we've had fairly low inquiry and um, I think we're sitting at 25 objections in there so far, which will begin to get underway on that process uh, in May. And that's sort of the high-level overview for you guys, if you've got some questions. Thank you, Melanie. Questions, team? Councillor Kelly. I issue through the chair. Um, the 12% have gone the pastoral, their average. Yeah, so does that apply to all qualified pastoral properties? Do you just throw it straight over the board, or do you actually go to each individual one that's given one to the other? Oh, that's, that's right, yeah. As I said, some districts haven't changed much at all. It's those that Lawrence, Beaumont, Superville, Table Hill here have had the bigger increase. <coughs> So yeah, you're right, that, that, that's an average for and, and, and the same for Deering. Right, the higher value of Deering, which includes the paraglide, doesn't change too much from that one. Like some high value Deering and some bottom So yeah. <coughs> but uh, through, uh, through you, you worship, but just to check in terms of the question, our individual valuation that you're presenting an average. Correct. Yeah. 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 Yeah, each each property is looked at an individual. <laughs> Other questions, Team Councillor Fells. Well, the Chair. Councillor um, Can I just ask a question with the objections from last round? Did you, can you say, was there a change in the evaluations up or down? Or? We do actually have a graph of that that we submitted um, in the in the full evaluation documentation, so we can share that. I think from memory, it sort of normally ends up sort of a little bit 50 50 of up and down, well, probably almost. And what has no change? So, uh, a definite mix between the, the three last time, um, versus <coughs> some districts. Um, what we've seen in the last three years has been more waiting, two people wanting them down, uh, versus um, sort of more of that 50 50. So. Thank you. Councillor Mackey. <coughs> but with farming, it's very much supply and demand, and um, a lot of the values that pastoral land has gone up, has been um, valued on dairy conversion ability and dairy grazing. With that being taken away, would you assess that there's quite a few um, pastoral farms that are could be really overvalued right now? There could be quite a settling period. Yeah, that's why it's important to, to remind you of the, the period that we're working to. So you know, we've, we've had to draw a line in the sand at September 23. So the market's conditions, is, certainly for pastoral farms, have, have worsened in that period of time. But by commodity prices, well, well back to the Australian budding mutton and, and the droughts kicking in too. So, you know, the market is certainly could, could be back slightly now. But there are a few sales tracking through that, that are pretty close to where, where, we, where we pitched them. That so could, that's reassuring. That could be location based and yeah. Carbon farming um, yeah. outfits are out of the market right now, basically, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. And also, dairy is like, like we know dairy conversion is entertained at the moment. Right. Thank you. Councillor Herbert. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, three questions from me. Um, CCCPA, can you remind me what that stands for, please? <laughs> the <laughs> Consumer Credit finance, it, it was uh, when they brought in the, the big crackdown onto um, people's bank lending, so when they were sort of going through and saying, well, you've spent money at McDonald's, and the, they were taking a far more um, thorough approach to lending. Um, so I think it was sort of end of 2022 from memory, or 2021, um, and so that restricted the ability of people to get finance, um, particularly in that first home buyer. Um, but yeah. cool. um, my next one, on your um, commercial and industrial, the, the rent range, I'm presuming that's per square metre? Yes. Okay. 
Um, last one. Do you, how many of the councils in New Zealand do you do the valuations for? I couldn't name the number off the top of my head, but I know we have the vast majority. We have every um, every council in the South Island, and I would say maybe there's around five in the North Island we don't have five or six. Um, but thank you. Yeah. Sure. Council Taylor. Thank you, Your Worship. So mine just carries on from the objection period. I'm just wondering, historically, how many people actually object to these credible valuations and, and, and maybe the benefit of doing so? Yeah, um, so I would say typical would be somewhere between 1% and 5% would be normal. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what the 80 objections was last time. I think it was sitting under the 1%. And they actually have been trending downward, and I think that could be for a number of reasons. One, we're getting more strenuously audited, so maybe the values are better. Um, and two, it could be with the availability of real-time values out there, you know, your, your homes, uh, we also have a real-time value available. So a lot of the times when people um, could object for wanting it up because they might sell their house, um, they're now able to get more up-to-date market movement valuations for free to help indicate that value rather than saying, well, the rating valuation is this. Um, so, yeah, generally I would say that we've been sitting um, on average around the 1% in, um, this year so far. Um, we'll see if that continues. <laughs> oh, and sorry, just to um, loop back what the, yeah, the, the benefit of, of yeah. doing it is. Um, each TA is different, I guess, in terms of how they actually set their rates. So any impact on that side of it um, is is varies throughout the, throughout the country. Um, I always think it is better for it to be within a logical, you know, band. And for whatever reason, it could be that someone's done a lot of work to their property that we haven't captured through a building consent, or there's some historic data that's sort of always been wrong. I think it's um, yeah a good idea to get it reviewed when you think that there. They're really wrong, but um, but hopefully the majority are within a, a logical band. Thank you. Where are the questions, councillors? Councillor Martin. G'day, how are you? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm uh, Councillor Martin from the Lawrence Chirpeck Award and um, first term councillor. The, um, I see the residential dwellings in, in Lawrence went up 53%, increased like. Is there a bit more elaboration around why 53% for our community? Well, it's a pretty good change just now. Like, I didn't actually work through there, but it's, it's probably coming off a low base too. There's been quite a few new builds through there. And well, the important thing is the sales activity is reflecting that, that, that increase. But that's all we do. We just try and interpret the market, follow the sales, and, and apply that to the district. Yeah, Lawrence, is, it, it's, it's going okay. There's good demand and good, good sales activity there. And agents are certainly quite quite busy. There's a couple of local, mm -hmm. local agents so quite busy. The, um, oh, yes, I think the rest of the district knows that we're in good heart up here, <laughs> country. <laughs> um, another question. Um, so how, how the other districts that you do it, how are they in comparison to the CDC? Like, to, with increases, or has there been a substantial gains for them as well? Or? I would say, um, just from my memory of the ones that I've been involved in sort of last year and this year, um, increases was, was, were probably often tracking around a 30% average, if we were saying. Um, so that's mostly the 2020 market. Um, so I would say, again, probably... Um, yeah, slow and steady. Um, we, we haven't sort of got them all, all finished this year yet, as to say right. where they're all tracking. But obviously, again, every single district has different drivers um, and coming off different value levels. So those those high level percentages can change dramatically from region to region. But definitely in the in the bracket of what I would say is just normal, maybe between fifteen and thirty percent as a high level full yeah yeah <laughs> TA yes. increase. From a rural yeah. perspective, those trends are quite quite common throughout the country. The big increase in forestry, slightly lifted there, and pastoral slightly lifted. It's a similar trend, really. The um, which leads me to my next question. Yeah. Um, the Lawrence Chirpeka Award is a very prestigious award, and there's a lot of people who are involved in it. Um, how much money is it for the Lawrence Chirpeka Award? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right pairs that I've been talking to and and um, you're using the forestry for the pastoral, but these guys, their argument is that they're actually going to be pastoral. Yeah, so they're not going to trend towards forestry. Yeah. And in one case, I've got one sheep and beef farmer whose farm's gone up $1 million. Yeah. And you can't understand why. And um, but then it raises the other question, and it's something you possibly can't answer, and I'm working with the girls here at the council about is, so the, the land values have gone up a million dollars. We're talking a major rates increase. So if your land value has gone up by a million dollars, so the rate tax is going to be greater on that one that individual. So yeah, it's about percent applying the percentages of the rate tax for the land values and the capital values is another question more for the for the CDC to answer. But um, yeah, you can see it's it's created quite a conversation out there in the community with the land values, capital values going up. So we work quite particular within that district though to find the pastoral sales that, that are not being used for forestry. So, so we have got pastoral sales in that location mm -hmm. to, to justify that increase. To justify it, yeah. Because yeah. I, I just feel that you've got to experience a bit of pushback. Oh, well, I'm suspecting, you know, yeah. like a million dollars is a lot of money in, yeah. this, in these tough times. So. I think it's also probably important to point out on that note as well, like <clears throat> even if the reverse was happening and we were coming in saying, that values were dropping 18% or, or whatever um, the impact. It, it is those changes in relativity. So if, if they've gone up a million dollars and everyone else around them hasn't, and maybe they were like they were out of alignment last time, then that could result in them having a bigger increase. But if everybody's going up similarly, it's not necessarily having that same level of impact. But again, that's partly your, your side of it, mean, not, not, yeah. not ours. But yeah, it's just... Um, yeah, depending. It, it is that the changes in relativity. Some areas have gone up more. So yeah. Like, yeah. Could have. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. If you discuss those, it can get you a constituent feel of the Yeah, they, they, I'm sure they'd appreciate that. Yeah. The um, Because I, I know from another experience, a right payer brought a parcel of land that had a capital value of $4,000, and the latest notice has gone up to $89,000. So, it's pretty good if it's only a paper transaction, but it, it's a pretty good um, capital gain, one would say. Thank you. Right, thank you. Questions finished? You know, Mel, thank you very much for that presentation. There's been times in the past where I get sparked up over QVs, but it is part of the process, isn't it? Uh, is it okay if you just call five, just in case we need to bring you back um, for while we have the discussion? Oh, feel free to have a seat, but um, mm -hmm. if you can just stay with us while we're still discussing that. Would you, would you like to leave them in? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm saying, if you can just sit there and if we need to call you back in, we will. Councillors, the matter's now open for discussion. If there is no discussion, do I have someone wish to move the recommendation? Uh, Councillor, while you're sitting down, you can maybe do that, Councillor. <laughs> For the moving of the recommendation, I thought we were going to stand today. Uh, happy to move, Your Worship. Thank you for that. Move, <laughs> Councillor Payne, <laughs> second, and Councillor Herbert. Magnificent. I put it to the vote. All those in favour? Aye. Those against. Thank you, team, and thank you. Where's Melanie? Thank you very much. You're dismissed. <laughs> she is. Appreciate it. Right, uh, uh, Councillors, if we can put back, please, to agenda item number one, which is the Sorry, mouth. Feedback. Mike, welcome. The floor's yours. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, just uh, just reviewing this this um, just recently, uh, and I just like there is one typo uh, on the first page there. So in that um, in focus area two, uh, opportunities for development. The second bullet point relating to Naston Park is actually a uh, repetition from the previous uh, uh, line above. So uh, just it can be ignored and that's, so that uh, error is repeated on the second page. But apart from that, a um, little, little typo, uh, happy to take any questions uh, to take the item that you need. Thank you for that. And can I also say, Mike, Mike the, the whole Tyro Mouth consultation process I really enjoyed. Good group of people over there, positive. I think we canvassed well and got really good feedback. So 
thank you to you and your team for the efforts. Um, councillors, questions for Mike, please. <coughs> Councillor Fudge, followed you. by Councillor Mackey. And I understand, thank you. Mike, um, I know you will do this, but is it quite a few things in those submissions that are not council's responsibility. And when you reply, I know you will put that that is not under our control and advise them where to go to for that when the response is put out. Yeah, through you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, yeah, necessary, for sure. Um, but um, I, I, pre, you know, previous iterations of uh, our place plans, you know, the, the approach that we've taken is uh, to identify, include in those plans, the things that the community say are important. That doesn't necessarily mean that council is going to take responsibility and do those things. It's purely reflecting what feedback tells us. Um, because that, that is, um, keeping that, you know, I guess the future reference for, for any range of purposes that the community might want to put it to. But, um, yeah. And then just a question, please. Um, the samples... <coughs> For the sewage from Waihola, where are those samples taken from, please? Before or after the outlet? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Not sure okay, that. that's fine. That's not one for you to understand that, but I just thought you might have an idea. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mackey. Do I have to stand for this? Right. Go, Mike. <laughs> hey, um, look, I was reading through some of the, um, what, the question, there was a question there. Um, on the dark sky. Now, was that that they didn't want their sky up, tiry mouth cluttered up by lights and stuff like that? That was the, um, that was the suggestion put forward, right. which we used, which we put into the consultation survey, that there might be um, some um, people, that, that, that might be some of the people we're keen on, uh, a dark sky initiative, as it's happened in other towns where you uh, restrict the level of street lighting, etc. There's a range of things you can do. So it gives you a better uh, view of the sky, I guess, at night. Uh, but well, you can see well yeah, I know, because I know that they have the checker part. Right, exactly. And perhaps there's something cut and shifted. Right, thanks, Mike. So, uh, I have one question, please, Mike, on the, on the bottom focus area, waste management. Um, just time sensitive. Just making sure, um, because people have run in the interim saying that there's the possibility of contractual changes and that. We would still have the flexibility to move with the time frame needed. It's not going to get tied up with this. That's a tricky one, I guess, yeah, in terms of waste management. Um, whether I don't haven't had this conversation really, staff around whether that you know, a council um, waste collection system feasible or whether it's looked at in the past. <coughs> Certainly it came through again clearly. So as I've said before, it's um just noting that that people are still you know, yes. requesting that. Um, that doesn't mean that and certainly when we were there the, the questions were asked, but now I realise that there is greater issues and time sensitivity that it's probably going to get dragged along by another process entirely. Um, further questions I mean, so, just to assist also I mean, I don't think there's a conflict or worry about timing and all that because the LTP, in terms of the, the strategies that we've got there, you know, do identify that these questions need to be asked and answered with the community. Um, so whether it actually goes down that pathway or not, the point is that it will be you know, opportunities to go through those that we've seen. Any further questions from my place? Thank you, staff. Councillor Will Wheeler. Thanks, Your Worship. Scribbled some notes here. It's probably not so much questions, but perhaps just comments on that. Perhaps, just, um, perhaps thoughts, not perhaps even feedback as such. But um, I notice from this that the community in Tyremouth seems to be opposed generally to further development in that area. And um, it sort of goes contrary in some ways to what some of the aspirations for the community are as well, which is having a shop or a cafe there. Um, you don't have the population, how are you going to, how is a business going to um, thrive in an area like that? Also, they want um, improvements to their roading footpaths, in particular footpaths often get mentioned at the um, their meetings, go over there, and uh, it's a long, probably not 
it's well over a kilometre of footpath in that area and for a small population with how we um, provide footpaths, new footpaths and great for them, and that would be a big impact on the adult community as well. And I wonder if um, the community might be more in favour of development if the development was sort of more controlled, done in a sympathetic manner, and there was the, perhaps the opportunity in, in our district plan to review what can be done in that community as well, and thinking particularly the scale of, um, of uh, size or height of housing, new developments, um, there's a new development gone in on a hill in that area, which is just a black box and it doesn't look particularly attractive, and we're over there um, the last meeting, and it was basically talking about the lights, it lit up the sky, you know, it really dominated the community. So I wonder if that's also an opportunity um, that we should, with talking to the community, perhaps go ahead out and look at that as well, um, just how we can do development sympathetically and still retain the character of that community. The other thing that stands out to me in this is a lot of what they are wanting done um, is also on the reserves in that area. And I think it would be good if we could perhaps get the reserve management plans sorted for that so they can feel confident that they, that the, that they can carry out um, the uh, development on those reserves or maintenance on those reserves that is in sympathy, is sympathetic to those reserves and what that community wants as well. So I guess that's my comments there. Um, I think, thanks Mike, that's the end of doing the, putting this together. There's a lot of um, a lot of work involved there. Um, I appreciate the work, the community coming and talking with us and um, I think it's a pretty good response from such a group. So thank you, Councillor Vowella, and you've sort of morphed into the, into the discussion time uh, as symbolised by a standing, but I will go back just to check is there any further questions just before we go to general discussion. So Councillor Martin. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. You don't. You don't need to stand. Yeah, no, please, sorry. Um, the um, Mike, um, the full for full project. There's a comment in here around the recommendations for full project information to, to be developed. That'd be a pretty big job, is it? Like that would be. That's another level above what you've already done. Yeah, that's correct. Um, through you, Your Worship. So um, yeah, so we've got a um, template for that that we've used the previous. Our place plans, yeah. So it's basically just laying out uh, the scope of what you know what that actually that project might might be. So that does require a little bit more consideration and discussion, particularly with staff and possibly going back to uh, people in the community. Uh, so what, it, what, what exactly does it look like? What's real estate that we can achieve? Mm -hmm. uh, who's going to lead that? Is it, is it a community led project, council, etc.? Um, uh, and then um, the reason why we've been trying to get this through reasonably quickly, I guess, is because so that <coughs> if there is a funding requirement, uh, then we would be coming, to, I guess, through the LTP to request. Right. Maybe some funds to go to just whether it's seed funding or whatever. But certainly, the, the how things have rolled in the previously. Previously, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, but so you, but you're correct. Yeah, there is a bit. In there. So that's the next stage. So there's quite a bit of work, and, and this is the community's wish list. Great. Yeah. This is their wish list. Yep. Councillor Fouts. For the chair. Um, on page 29, Mike, regarding the, the rocks that the community deemed to want to remove, is that actually an option? Because I mean, they're obviously being put there for a reason. Um, it seems silly for me to take them out. Uh, but I'm not an expert, but I'm just, is that an option? Or? Oh, I'm certainly no expert either, um, uh, but I'm just, again, this is, as Councillor Martin said, this is their wish list. Yeah. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to happen, but what, what as, I've, as I've proposed, it's, uh, we, it could, there could be some form, some level of investigation to what the options are uh, on that, on that sh shoreline there, 
yeah, that might there might be other options that um, that might, might work better. So um, just purely saying that um, that's obviously quite important to locals. Sorry, mouth. Uh, what what are the options available to, to deal with that? If any. Thank you. Just another question on that, Mark. Just some, somewhere in here, a number of times or a couple of times, was reference to council put the rocks down here. Yeah? Whereas I thought mm, it's probably OSC. I can remember there was the potholes, and that remember we had quite a tangle there. But did we put those rocks there, or was it OSC? For you, your issue, <coughs> that was CDC temporary repairs, um, just to try and stop the erosion because there was significant erosion into the. Into the, into the reserve area. Council has approved a budget in the current year for investigations and resource consents for a permanent solution. And then once we've you know the cost of that, that'll come back for consideration by council. Okay, thank you. If there's no further questions, team, we will go into uh, are we going into on discussion? I'm happy to move the recommendations one that we received a report and two that the council approves mm. the following projects or for project investing. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Vowell. Well, is moved. Can I have a seconder, please? Okay. Councillor Finch is seconded. Any further discussion before we put to the vote, Councillor Ludman? Probably just a concern that we're rushing this process. So, as we're part of the long term plan submission, I, I kind of get what we're going to do, but to get all this information and to have it back in time for the LTP submission process. I that that's just a concern I have. Um, I understand where it's coming from, but um, we're kind of well into the long term plan. Okay, taken. Okay. Further questions, please stand before we put to the vote, Councillor Martin. Um, through you, Mr. Chair. The um, looking at the community's wish list, and, and as I've said before, many cases. The, the community knows what they want and what's best for their community, but um, we're heading into some pretty tough decision making periods. And, and I tend to agree with Councillor Ludeman that um, do we need to be rushing this? Because at a snapshot, the Whistlerish list doesn't look too extensive, but um, I think, and Mike sort of clarified it for me, is, is that there's going to be a lot of work involved here. and. Um, Everybody's under a bit of pressure, let alone financial pressure, that we're going to be enduring very soon too. So I suppose it's another question for Mike. How important or serious does the community feel that they need to be driving this? Um, that, uh, add to it, Steve. Um, so through you, Mr Chairman. Um, so I guess what we're doing here is following the same process that we've done for the last, I'm not sure, four or five community plans which is where we've run, rolled out the consultation over the summer because that's when we get the most engagement. Uh, then it is a little bit of a rush, I guess, to get it, whether it's in a long-term plan or an annual plan, but to formulate those, um, those uh, projects, you know, into project sheets, we call them, um, and, and so that, and therefore, um, to, and also to get the plan signed off, I guess, before the end of the year. But, and, and, but more importantly, that there is funding available to, where, where necessary, to get some of those projects <coughs> Because um, if you don't do that, then of course um, the community's got all we've got. We've got them all engaged and, and ready to go, and ask them what they want. And then we say, "Oh well, sorry, we're going to sit and wait for a couple of years until because we haven't got any really got any funding to to do any of those things." So um, it just it goes a little bit flat, I guess, if we were to do that. So um, that's that, that's the method that we have followed. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be the same again this time round, but. Um, so we, we, we need to find out, do the project status report, but we need to approve funding so you can continue to do that. Well, I would be, we, staff would be requesting funding, I guess. Yeah. Through the LTP, but well, so again, we the discuss this process to go through the track. Go with that in with other priorities, et cetera. But um, uh, I guess it's, it's, it's the same process that um, West Otago, Clinton, Glen, uh, Glen Valley, et cetera, have gone through in recent times. So. Yeah, as, along with the development of the um, reserve management plan as well. I guess that's that dovetails with this process, particularly around reserves. Thank you. Mike. Thank you. If there's no further questions, then we're going to put it to the vote. All those in favour? Aye. 
Thank you. Thank you for that, too, Michael. I've enjoyed the the first part of the process, getting out and having the days with the communities, that's great. Looking forward to the next stages. Right, our team will get a step up a gear or two, I suspect. We're heading into confirmation of the council minutes that we had on the 15th of February. Someone prepared to move them as a true and correct record? Move Councillor Capperwood, seconded someone. Councillor Phelps, all those in favour? Aye. Those against, thank you. Next one when I finally get to turn down to you with. Number four is our Infrastructure Strategy and Operations Committee on the 14th of March. Same deal, move Councillor Graham, seconded page 61. Sorry, so, yeah, picking them over too quick. So we've moved Councillor Graham, seconded Councillor Herbert. All those in favour, oh, sorry, any discussion? Put it to the vote, all those in favour? Aye. Those against, thank you. Regulatory and community committee minutes held on the same day. This is the one that we were. I guess now we've got a slight problem here because the chairman has deluded herself and thinks she's the previous <laughs> mayor. We won't be having that. It's not going to haze, it's going to. Fit. I actually put that in. Right, <laughs> of course you did. It'll be changed. So we'll it's take that back to Councillor Finch and are you moving, Councillor Finch? Yes. And seconded by Councillor Payne. Yeah. Is there any questions? Yeah, Your Worship. Just uh, my name has been omitted from the present that day. I wasn't here, so I need to put that in the minutes as well. Good spotting. Thank you. So, right, we've got those two typo changes. There's nothing else to it. I've got to move it, but have I got a second there? Can, sorry, Kim, were you seconding? Yes. Your yes word. You sorry, Councillor Payne, thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Over to page 72, where we had the Tourism <coughs> Policy Committee meeting the last three on that day. Move Councillor Ludeman, seconded Councillor Phelps. Any questions before we put to the vote? All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Thank you. Then the committee as a whole meeting that we had on that day. I'm, I'll move it because I chaired it. Someone prepared to second, please. Seconded Second Councillor Volwheeler. All those in favour? Aye. Those against. To our community board meetings for noting. So we've got firstly the noting of the West Otago community board meeting. I'm not prepared to <laughs> do not give me that single job. <laughs> uh, the West Otago community board minutes noting by a uh, move by Councillor Herbert, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. All those in favour? Aye. Those against. And the same for the noting of the last to a picket. Community board minute meeting by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Herbert. All those in favour? Aye. Those against. And then on the 14th of March, and that morning we had a pretty big day there, we the noting of the 14th of March's meetings for the Audit and Risk Committee. Now, that's risk and assurance now, isn't it? Move Councillor Kennedy, seconded by the shake of an ear by Mr. Councillor McCrosby. All those in favour? Aye. Those against. Uh, before we move to the noting of the, no, it's the moving of the Youth Council minutes, just want to really congratulate Paige King for becoming chair, Sophie Crawford from over West Otago became deputy, and a really good group of young youth councillors there. They really, we got off to a good start. So looking forward to uh, the Youth Council meetings coming up. And not only that, team remember the Anzac Day, she's the time when we tag in. I know that Lily is really trying so hard. We've got to get in behind Lily. So uh, Lily will have assigned you with your youth councillors. Please can we make contact with them? Anzac Day is a pretty easy one if we can to tag on. Um, uh, we've got a good group of youth in behind us. We've got to get in behind them. Um, I'll be happy to move. I was at that meeting, so I'll move it. And the Council of Old Wheeler is seconding. All those in favour? Those against. Thank you. 106. Is Chris, have we moved too fast for Chris? Awesome. Oh, we, we, we'll move over to item number 12, which is the land transport program for 24 to 27, the update. Do I go to a staff member? Uh, through you, Risha. Um, between, between Donna and I, we'll be able to answer any questions. Cool. Um, but it's a really good more of an update. In making sure the council has the information that we've been given. The upshot of it is we still aren't going to actually have confirmation or anything until probably 
<coughs> September this year. So um, we are, they have indicated we'll, they'll give us an indication, but when they gave us that indication last time, it was nothing like the final confirmation. So um, we, that potentially could happen. Thank you for the update, actually. It's, you know, there's been money getting spent there, and we've got a critical roading network, a huge one. So thank you for the update. Okay, questions to the staff. Councillor Herbert. Are we sitting or standing for the questions? For the questions, we can sit for the discussion. So, thank you, Your Worship. Throw through you. So, there's a lot of acronyms here to, to, to remember. Um, I'll get those in a minute. But so, when we look at the figure on page 107 and how that all works, NZTA is what we call it now. So, what's that right? We NZTA now. So, that sits above all of that. You so say that the. Um, <coughs> The Where tables on page 108 um, are, the, are the broad categories in each of those areas, activity classes, where the government's saying this is the, the upper and lower range of what we're going to be spending on these activity classes. And then from that, it's divvied out to all the regions, and our pot of money comes out of those specific activity classes for what we ultimately get allocated by NZTA as an overall organisation. So. The GPS sets the government position that then flows down through and, and enables NZTA to allocate within those ranges that then flows down through to us and through the national, our regional land transport program. And the NLP is a national land transport program. Yep. And so, and then the RTS and the AOs. What's the RTS? Yeah, the RTS is the regional transport strategy. Usually the first time it's mentioned, it should have the full um, the full wording unless it's being put into another diagram from NZTA. On page uh, 110, in that box there, the third box down, it says, and AOs for RTS consideration. Oh, I'd have to double check on that one. I'm not sure, sorry. That's what do it. RTS. For AOs, for RTS. I know, look, it's one of those people that do this do it for a living, they do it every day. That's really your worship. It could be administering authorities. Sorry? Why? AO, it doesn't matter. It's only TA, it's not territorial authorities, not Arbitrary. Not all of them are TA. It's all the authorities. There's other things like DOC that actually get funding through this as well. So it's not always a TLA that is spending national transport program money. So I wouldn't want to guess what it is, but it could be administering authority or something like that. Thank you. It was just an AO either. <laughs> <laughs> we know what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Kennedy. Um, so the activity classes like that, Jules, when we put in for funding, it can only be used on that. It can't be shifted around and moved into other categories. Uh, we, within, within certain categories, there is flexibility to move uh, around. There are some categories that can't be moved because you have to do a business case to get funding within some of those categories. So, um, but there is there is general flexibility. Probably the key thing is on page 109 that we have been through before, which shows the change that we're requesting for the future three years from our past three years, um, and that it is a significant increase to, to keep up with the expected or well, the costs from our recent contract renewals. Um, I would just. Put that into context that we are at the lower end of the band of Otago and Southland in terms of the increases we've requested. Um, there are other other authorities in, the, in our region that have asked for a lot more increases than we have. Uh, but we that is decided by NZTA in terms of what we get, and this is what happens every three years. It's especially uncertain when there is a change of government because they have a change of priorities, and their way of directing that change of priorities is by saying this is our new. Um, government position statement. This is the bands you have to go and spend your money in. I mean, a significant change there. You can see the rail network, um, <laughs> the band has gone from a, a reasonable amount of expenditure down to potentially a lower limit of very little expenditure on the rail network. Um, and that's the indication that the government's given of where their direction is. Exactly where it will land, um, there's still a process to go through for that. But this is really just giving you an update of the, the information we have. And I suppose we still. Uh, we're going out with what we've asked for, um, <clears throat> and we won't have confirmation of that until at this stage, after the LTP has been adopted. Councillor Catherine. Uh, through you, the Chair. 
Um, it'd be interesting to see what 23, 24 would look like. The figures of 23, 24, 22, 23, I don't know, the previous uh, government. Yeah, are, those, are those tables available? Through your issue? Yes, they are available. You have to go, you have to go back through the NZTA older websites and bits and pieces to find them. But, um, I mean, for us, what those GPSs are is, is only one component. What we're really interested in is what have we going to prove for our NZTA budgets. So that's the, that's the key thing for us. But yeah, they, they will be available. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
gone and she's back again. Thank you. Um, on to general discussion. Thanks. Does anyone have any discussion? I am prepared for an item of information like this to go right to recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Funch. Thank you, Mayor. All four? All five? Yes. yes. And also, so, Councillor Finch has moved all five recommendations. Can I have a seconder, please? Councillor Ludeman. Any further discussion before we put the vote? All those in favour? Aye. Those against? Thank you. Move on to the mirror report. So, um, you'll see my report there, just a couple of items of note on page 112. I attended both the War Memorial Gardens in Kaitankata and the swimming pool opening. Two really great community spirited events that just shows you what can be done with rolling the sleeves up. Really enjoyed the day out there. And the citizenship ceremony, you'll see that there's a, a few entries in here. Just so that everyone's aware, citizenship ceremony, Anna and I went down yesterday. It's gonna it's gonna be one heck of a ceremony. But unfortunately, and I was so looking forward to being there for the first time. I can't be there because Minister Simeon Brown has requested everyone's voice be at the table for discussions on Three Waters, Queenstown, at exactly the same time. Councillor Payne, Deputy Payne, can't be there for her um, personal reasons. And that left us, I, I then went to Councillor Vowela, but fortunately, we found the Council of Oweala cannot know it. Well, we could have had a 25 citizens that weren't actually citizens. So we've had to default to the rule book and we've asked, because it's got to be a JP. So Jill McIntosh, as you all know, Jill works out of the library in Milton, um, a, a great community champion through there. So Jill's going to do it. Um, really appreciate your support. We went through the, the rundown for the event yesterday. That, to have it in that setting and to be able to do it with the cultural significance that we're attaching to it. It'll be an event, I'm, I'm gutted that I'm not going to be there, but um, thank you for all those that are in support. Uh, on the 20th of March, so last week, I uh, travelled to Christchurch for the Zone 5 and 6 combined conference where uh, Councillor Tamer Alley was Confirmed taking over from me. She did a great job, actually, far better than I was doing, so good on her. But one of the things, probably the key thing of note that I want you to be aware of was that, as you're aware of around the city deals and the, I think there's also regional deals or whatever, it's the new Three Waters conversation. We, in all honesty, as you know, have been gaining limited traction in Otago and Southland. And a Targa and Southland structure would be a suboptimal arrangement, in my opinion. It lacks the critical mass. We all know it does. So there is whispers, shall we say, of the possibility of extending further for the South Island. And those uh, whispers have been certainly given some impetus with Naitahu offering to facilitate and gather everyone around. If we're unable to do it ourselves, thank goodness someone's asking. So the steps now are the um, this is an operational issue primarily. So in the initial discussions to try and see what councils would be at the table and talking, the political arm is going to shut up, hopefully, and the operational arm, the CEOs, are starting to put together how a collaborative effort might look. Um, there are the initial discussions from a Targa and Southland perspective. All of a Targa and Southland was saying, yeah, it'd really, um, be silly not to. I don't know, well, it's not, it's not unanimous in the rest of the district, in the rest of the South Island. But that was a real critical one to, for, to get in that critical mass and the ability to drive the efficiency. So it'll be interesting to see where that's going to. And really, other than that, that's, that's my report. So I'll go around the table and I can actually go to Councillor Kennedy just to fair jazz it up. So we'll go around the table and start with Councillor Kennedy, please. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and we have questions 
for everyone, for everything at the end, as always. So, um, yeah, it's been a usual busy meeting that we've all attended. Um, have, did meet with Stacey, uh, read the Green Space Gentleman. Or Whiskey Gully through our community, our place, um, just potting up things there, and I will get a report to you, Mike, at some stage. Um, painted the gateway, so if you want to come for a look, it looks really cool. Uh, to a peak of bursary, that's always a great one. Um, the councillor Martin and myself, and um, our gentleman from Central Otago didn't turn up this year, um, we're sort of chasing that one up, but um, yeah, there was. Um, Great um, enthusiasm from a lot of um, applicants, and we were lovely to give out some money to you. So that's always good. Um, Clutha House First has been very busy and started tracking along. But um, yeah, me for the month. Thank you, Michelle. Councillor Fells. Thank you, Bishop. It's the usual committee meetings. Uh, I also went to the Kai Paul opening in the Kai Memorial. Gardens um, definitely put on a show after the Memorial Gardens. The Kai people put a great beat on, so did a great job. Went on the Iwi tour, um, really enjoyed that. Uh, quite enjoyed the information that Ruth uh, I was lucky enough to be in her bus and got a quite a bit of information. It was a great day out. Uh, just you stay went to the Targa River Care, which he also presented um, the video launch and. Uh, Great, great turnout there at Te um, Again, a great, great, uh, great thing to watch. So that's brilliant. Thank you, Wayne. Councillor Fudge. Thank you. 26th of February, Youth Council, and we have got um, some existing ones and some new ones, and it is really great to see around the table and a lot of confident young people on it as well again. On the 28th, Otago Museum Trust Board, and we had at the start of the meeting, um, I remember Graham Crombie, so it's five years since our chair passed, and his family all came along for that, so that was very emotional. On the 11th Milton Area Promotions meeting, and that's when a new, um, a new member came up with a different idea for where the dog park should be. On the 12th, the Foundation Trust meeting, on the 14th, risk and <coughs> committees. The 19th, well, how we're looking forward, as usual, really great positive group. And on the 21st, Cleaver Foundation Trust had a Milton, Milton meeting to get attendees along and see if we can get something running in the Milton area for the Bruce Award. Um, I won't say anything else on that at the moment, but I'm really happy. <coughs> Thank you, yeah, oh, thank you for that, Garner. Thank you for that, Councillor McCrusty. A uh, fairly quiet month. We had uh, Iwi tour, we're well, all looking forward. Um, standing committee meeting, council meeting, and I attended the rate pass meeting in Belfort as well. Thank you for that, Councillor Payne. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just extraordinary for our uh, usual meetings. I have been to uh, attend the LG. Dinner with uh, Sam. It was, really, it was a good evening, actually. It was really good to sit down and chew the fat with him a little bit. Um, uh, several Tacoma meetings, as you did, uh, uh, appreciate at the moment trying to get things sorted. PCG and the youth council meeting. That's my lot. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> Councillor Grant. Yeah, I've been busy. Have yeah. <laughs> you? Yeah. 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 Uh, um, I attended the youth council workshop. Is quite, you had to, to say all these names, and about 15 of them, I remember them, was quite good. On the only name I forgot was my own. Um, I also attended the the, or the inaugural Toko Car Show, which was um, quite a success. And I to judge one of, the, one of the classes, and you wouldn't believe it, but my mate's car won. Um, quite promo. Um, I really enjoyed the tour of the district of the significant uh, sites for Ewe with, with Ruth and Cuckoo. Um, Neil with Sam and Susan Freeman Green. Really good to have a yarn with Susan. Um, PCG did it, uh, 
And I, I don't know if I should have declared it on a conflict of interest or something, but Ray Powell shouted me a uh, hand or a space after the meeting last week. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Three. <laughs> um, Councillor Harriman. Thank you, Your Worship. Not a lot from me. Uh, all I did was shoot up to the to the most flat uh, water plant and look at the siting of the new reservoir, treated with water reservoir. So, not a lot from me. Thank you. Thank you, John. Councillor Mack. Well, for the month in Clinton, too. You, and you left out one of ten as you judged scarecrows in Clinton on Sunday. Twenty third, twenty third, twenty fourth. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And um, we had a Clinton community um, ratepayers or board meeting, and Steve come down, and Stacy and Lily, and I think that went reasonably well. And then we had a community board meeting in Clinton as well. Thank you for that, Brent. Councillor Lund. Uh, we did the Otago South River Care meeting yesterday with Ruth. Um, Showed you, showed you three videos and really great asset there for the community to be used. Did the iwi tour with Ruth in the morning, cross recreation centre meeting, the inaugural youth council meeting, diploma meeting, opening of the War Memorial Gardens in Kai, opening of the swimming pool in Kai. Um, and look, Kai can just always turn it on, can't they? The community really get out there and support great LGNZ dinner with Sam and Susan Freeman Green. Honestly that is just worth mega bucks really. Very um informative catch up. Appreciate it. It's me. Thank you, Ali. Um, I should probably sing the national anthem to remind you the standby mail I need to do Councillor Mum. <laughs> Um, yes, Peter. I will have to remind you to stand. Last two together for the standing. <laughs> it's just a habit we're going to get into, Craig. Um, it's been um, yeah, quite a busy period, actually, not just with council business and um, regular council meetings and so forth, but with personal work matters and so forth. Um, yeah, spent a bit of time with the local sporting bodies, as QV New Zealand said, we're in a strong position up our way. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of balancing, attending a few of the sports and sporting bodies meetings locally, um, just showing a bit of base on behalf of just council and community board. Um, had a meeting, Steve came up and we had a good, robust talk about um, the residential development. Lawrence. Sounds like land's going to be too bloody dear to buy up there now to do any developing, so we might have to stick with Kai. Uh, various fundraising events happening around the, the township, and we, there's um, Hell, not Hell, Michelle, touched on the Chirpika County anniversary, and that's always good fun. And we had a community board meeting that day, and Swimming pool meetings, drop in session. Oh, we had the community board had our first drop in session there the week before last, and we just set four o'clock, five o'clock aside because some of the locals at their last community board meeting thought that the board meetings were a bit intimidating for the old, older, well, the elderly and the older ones in the community coming along and speak to us. So we did a less formal drop in session, so just advertised it for there and, and uh, followed their wishes. And we had one person turn up, so it was great. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but we're trying our best. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Mulwheel. Oh, thank you, Worship. Yeah, a few things on, too, actually. Um, 24th of February, we went to the uh, Kotangata War Memorial Park dedication as well. I would have got to pull one if I had the diary up to date. Unfortunately, I missed that by two hours. Um, on the 26th of uh, February, the youth came to the Youth Council meeting, and uh, gosh, yeah, I just endorse what's been said. A positive bunch of positive young people in the, in the um, people who stood for the chair and deputy chair's roles, so very, very worthy um, contenders for those roles, very well spoken. 
but he only one of them could be chair and one deputy chair. Um, on the 28th, uh, there was a meeting held in Milton for, with, regarding the cycle trail opportunities. There was also a positive meeting there too, and possibly the one bigger thing came out of that from the council point of view was perhaps just signage around there to direct people into the main street of town too would be helpful. So that's something to, for us to look into. Um, the 4th of March uh, came down to the uh, dinner with the President and Chief Executive of uh, Local Government New Zealand. Again, I just endorse previous uh, councillors have said that that was approved very worthwhile. Good to know that um, we're not alone as a council with great advisors. They are trying to make sure that councils work together on this and aren't settled out and picked off. Uh, 6th of March, the Sydney and Cultural Sites Tour. That was also um, worth, very worthwhile. 7th of, Mar uh, uh, 7th of March, the farewell to Ruth Radcliffe. Very emotional. Um, Farewell. It's sad to see Ruth going, given all that she's contributed to this district, in particular yeah, young people. Tory Mouth Community Society. Um, on the 18th and 19th, that's Monday and Tuesday last week, I went to an alcohol and drug harm reduction um, hui in Dunedin, and that was very interesting. And hopefully, I've, there was a contact there who spoke about. Um, Students and alcohol there, yeah, and uh, hopefully that's a contact I was able to give to Lily, and hopefully that might be something that the students wish to the sorry the youth council might wish to pick up on and develop. And yesterday was the Otago South River Care um, for the Overwatch. Great to see a history being recorded. This Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Councillor Catherwood. Thank you. Um, council meetings, Clark Point community meetings, no record going forward meeting with an update on our little cycling project, which has been quite positive. Uh, Clark Point Hall Committee uh, meeting, which uh, they meet very rarely, so it was nice to catch up with them uh, last week. Rick Paul um, Committee, we're um, currently getting the fundraiser underway to uh, try and meet our annual operating budgets. Um, usual rate pass through the front door. Uh, with a request for a service request for a poor tourist that got stuck in one of our public uh, loos at Jack's Bay for a couple of hours. Uh, opportunity that's been remedied. Um, <laughs> touch base with the Papua Hawaii community project. So, Mike's still here. No, he's gone. So, good update from Mike. There's a bit of positivity coming out of Papua Hawaii um, regarding a community project uh, between community and council. And had great pleasure. Catching up with the Punaweer Picnic Group that organises our yearly fireworks uh, display in uh, Punaweer. Uh, they, they've been struggling for anyone to take take on um, that event. Um, our members are, are getting a bit long on the tooth. They want to they want to stand back from it, but um, it looks like we're going to keep it, keep it going for this year at least anyway. And hopefully we can reinvigorate it. A little bit of positivity and um, some decisions we made on. Where they're going with the with the council uh, community project regarding the Puna Weir playground. So some decisions made there. So I'll be catching up with Mike just to tidy them up. Hope to get them finished. Um, and then the, probably the last thing's been just assisting a, a contractor finding uh, manholes throughout our township that's coming in to do some uh, uh, camera work, application camera work. So some quite positive things. Thank you, Dane. Okay, councillors, questions to questions, councillor Funch. Um, on the 23rd of March, you've got your attendant, Lawrence, and you've got it spiked in the 22F convention in Lawrence. Is that meant to be 2024? No, 22F is the Lions. <laughs> uh, Councillor Martin will know more about what's the 22F is Southern or something. Zone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Any further questions to questions? If not, all right, Councillor Martin. Um, uh, for Council Hall Wheeler, so the drug and alcohol course that you attended, were you invited or were you attending? Um, I, I was, I received an invitation, 
can't remember, that came through. It was put on by a group called the Students for Sensible Drug Policy, university students, and I attended really in, the, um, in my capacity as chairperson of the district licensing committee. Ah, right. Councillor Finch. That came through as an email we all received because I sent it to Lily for the Youth Council for advert that we're doing around the alcohol. <coughs> yeah. Councillor Payne. Oh, thank you, Worship. Uh, not so much a question about this month's activities, but I am wondering about the soapboxes and whether we've got some important dates coming up. Because I've got a work plan I'm trying to put together right at this minute. And I need to Get some sort of confirmation. So, yeah, before. my apologies, Council. We did have them all, and then there was the two week delay, and I know that Anna's put them together. So, there's there's a couple of days we were doing some pretty big loops. We're going to have the meeting in Milton and the meeting in Balcluta in the Hall in the Hub at Smoko Tom, because we'll, we'll go to a Smoko, and I'll just confirm with Anna. But we were slightly hesitant to come out with the dates. Because the auditors still haven't greenlit, as far as I know, their date. So let's just make sure that we follow the process. When the auditors say, time to go and em embrace your community, as always, we don't embrace the community. But check with answer. Uh, if, if there's no other questions, just two other uh, things. So, folks, just out of this, but two days ago, um, Boy, is there some people sleeping rough in the district. I'm trying to assist them. I'm trying to put some support around them. We went round uh, Balcluta Camping Ground, <coughs> back of the Camping Ground, up to the hospital. I said, boy, is it full up. We're as full up in this district as I've ever seen, and there's an enormous strain on a load. Here this was, this Camping Ground might have had 60 or 70 caravans and huts in there. But it just shows that as councillors, we're going to keep an eye out and, and, and have that understanding of the wider implications because there's certainly some vulnerable, vulnerable people paying an enormous price for the district's accommodation shortage. On a second note, um, as you're probably aware, I got away with three months of not going to hospital, but tripped up again the other day. So arms will be obliterating the diary in front of me. We're going to take some steam out the system that will not be around the LTP. But I really thank everyone for stepping up and assisting. Um, already I've had a totally unique one where I had to delegate and call on the deputy to go down and pull down one of my electric fences. So thank you, Kenny, for stepping in in the middle of the night. And what I don't know, I already thank you for stepping in for helping me. Appreciate it. Councillor Ludman. I just want to add one point to what you've made um, about lack of accommodation and what's going on in the district. And perhaps highlight, from my understanding, Kiwi Harvest is no is stopping its um, visits to Balclutha, and that's going to be a huge loss to the district. And I don't know whether there's any way we can pull together to make that happen or not, but. Yeah, just noting that. I suppose I can't, I can't say too much, but there is work going on in behind. But I know with a couple that we were trying to assist, the options are just evaporating in front of you. Even the groups that are there, they're struggling for food, they're struggling for parcels. That's, that's getting vile in straight. Councillor Funch. Can I ask, do we know why Kiwi Harvest has stopped? They portion the packages to another through another way. They, they did say to me that if we were prepared to go through to Dunedin and pick up the goods, they were there and we could still have them, but they weren't providing the service to come south, so we would have to organise to go through and pick up the goods. So that's once a week, isn't it? It's once a week or once a fortnight, I'm just not sure. So who do you get in contact? Um, I'll talk to you later. Kingston mm. yeah. Right, um, if we can, please, if we can go back to the some page, page 111, there's a recommendation, please. Councillor Finch has moved, someone seconded, Councillor Herbert seconded, 
All those in favour? Aye. Those against? And now move to our next item, our CEO's report. Uh, thank you, Worship. So I'll take your report as read. Um, just uh, highlight that um, there's a new section here for the Deputy Chief Executive. So I'm sure that section's going to grow. There's a bit more things to report on. Uh, and also, um, there's a number of new staff appointments, a number of staff are. Uh, uh, we're here, some of them are, are some uh, in, that, in that, but I think the what we will do, um, uh, councillors, is introduce new staff through the committee process when we're looking at the activities that they are responsible for. It will make more sense when we align them to, to that. So we'll just make sure we uh, tidy that up. And uh, otherwise, have you take any... Oh, I'll also make the point, Chair Halliwell, which we were aware of, was resigned. Um, that last meeting is the 24th, so it's still to come, um, and uh, we're still in that process of um, out there recruiting for another chair. I'm happy to take Thank you. Questions. So, just before questions, this is my first opportunity that I've seen to congratulate Jules on his appointment to deputy. I hope you're as good as my one. Surely you will be. If I need a little fence pulled down, I'll give you a ring. But uh, congratulations to that. I want to acknowledge uh, Chair Halley Wells. How many years has it been? I think it was 20. It's come, it's come back a bit, but I want to acknowledge Chair Halley Wells. Um, we have, I think we have one more meeting with him where we can do it, but just saying it's there. Questions, please, team. Councillor Finch. Um, we have an updated staff. Um, yes, please. And I know it needs done when you have new ones come and go, but you must have that on the computer. CDC Communications. Who? Councillor's Documents. 20. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if we could have updated when the staff leave and arrive and that, so we have an idea, please. Thank you very much. And like where they fit in and those sorts of things. Details, please. Is, is there a chance to go one step further and have pictures? Mm, I was going ones? to ask that, but I thought it might have been. I don't know if you can because I'm. I just seen the pictures. Yeah, I'm just having trouble you know, to refer back to in three months' time. But, but that side. So, any further questions? Rick, yeah, Councillor Martin. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to Steve. Steve, um, the external appointments, are they full time or are they part time or are they working from home? Obviously, some of them and are they full time staff or um, uh, through you, Your Worship? Uh, no, the majority of these will be uh, the expectation would be full time, um, but you can you can at the moment put um, fixed to part time and full time. I don't think we necessarily state in this in this part of the report. Which, which ones they are, but I expect that um, uh, if not, uh, basically all, if not all, uh, full time permanent. Right, is the, oh, Councillor Mackey? Yeah. Um, Steve, are these new appointments, are they new jobs or are they replacing people who were in old jobs? A combination, uh, Councillor. So, a number of them relate to um, uh, three waters and the flow on effect of three waters into uh, different parts of the organisation. And another part of it relates to uh, the increase in staffing for the combined department of um, strategy and capital delivery that we pulled together. So we've got um, a number of staff in the um, old capital delivery side of things, project management side of it and project administration so that's the increased staff numbers to deliver the projects that we need to be delivering um, otherwise you will also see the the areas that um, we've previously highlighted around facilities and waste so um, you'll be aware that for many years we've only had one staff member basically looking after um, all parts of waste including strategic Side of things. I mean, other staff assisted, but basically, um, we um, certainly weren't resourced for that activity. 
um, and moving forward with the waste strategy and where things are heading strategically with waste, the, uh, the increased cost of waste, Mount Kui, where we're going from Mount Kui, we absolutely needed to have the <coughs> focus on waste as well. So that's why you'll see in the restructure, transportation, reserves, and um, green space, and waste, much more emphasis on the waste side. Thank you for that, Tane. This time, was there any further questions? Councillor Funch, did you move before? For some reason, in my thoughts, I had you had already moved. I'll go with that. Councillor Funch has moved. Someone to second, please. Thank you, Councillor Payne. So we're going to move in a second. Uh, put the vote. All those in favour? Those against? Should we just drift our feet on Councillor McCrosty Gaines? Is because we've only got one more and then we'll break for smoke. He's back in the room so we can go. So uh, just that last one, I'll move that we set the or approve the documents for consent and seal. Is someone prepared to second them, please? Well, we'll see if you have a question. But I do on 5.1. Next explanation there is this. <laughs> Lot such and such recreation reserve and Sussex streets and Sussex Street accepts and consent to use <coughs> for or tea, etc. Is that legal speak? Or what if it is legal speak, what does it mean? Uh, well, three E worship is legal speak, which means I need to find out what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you worship your head and councils. I mean, you know, some of these ceiling ones and they talk about deposited plans and, and um, uh, title numbers, record, records of titles. And often, I mean, there's no pictures associated with these things. They're just pure records of what the document was. Um, and I think that's always been one of the issues is that that's all it reflects. You've got to sort of take a bit of a gamble if you wanted to try to figure out what it actually says. Um, and what it relates to, but um, we can definitely um, let you know what that particular item is. Wonder what Sussex Street is accepting, why Sussex Street has to accept. Thank you. I'm confident that part is legally. Councillor Grant. Uh, yes, the three you was the uh, 4.1. Is, is that an endowment? Property or something, or what's the story? Um, again, uh, we would have to check um, through your worship specifically what that is. Um, I don't think. No, I won't hazard. It could be two or three different things, um, and uh, so I won't. I won't hazard a guess at that. Two questions on consent and sales this is the first time, mm. so have we exhausted the questions? Mm. Put it to the vote. All those in favour? Right. Those against, right? There's only public excluded to go. So, oh, um, sorry. Right, yes, right, sir. Right. So, you wish. No, the late item was public excluded. Yep. Um, but the question is because of live streaming and things, is it better and preferable to go to public excluded resolution so that we can just end the live stream? I was going to do that, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but okay, we can easily do that. We will. Uh, you'll see on page one two one our reasoning for going into public excluded. Um, I've had a read of them. I think they're pertinent to what we're looking at today. So I'm happy to move. What's this? If we're following? Um, that's no, that's that. The, Your Worship, the Ombudsman required that. So um, what that identifies is that if you were to have a member of the public. That you were going to identify to be part of that, you have to specify. And our argument was well, you would include that surely if you wanted to have somebody, and you, otherwise you wouldn't include it. But the Ombudsman directed that we needed to include the resolution as it was, so that's why it's there. And, and it's not, so. Yeah, there's nothing. Okay, so about. consequently, I'll just move one and three. Yeah, yep, I'm moving one and three. Is someone prepared to second? Councillor Felt. Prepared, perhaps prepared to second. All those in favour? Right. All those against. <coughs> so we'll come back for the including the 